So we are in a really cool little RV park called Viking Village. And it's uh, located on the grounds of an old orphanage. And it's beautiful. It's like we're in a park. It reminds me of when we stay in those places we really love, like Blanchardville, where we're literally right in a park. Um, but the reason we chose this one this summer is because uh, we needed full hookups. I've got a lot of running around I want to do and some meetings and whatnot, and I didn't want to leave Terry where she'd have to worry about anything like dumping tanks or, or getting help to do that or any of those kinds of things. So this is perfect. It's rural. It's beautiful. It's not far from Lake Gaganza or my daughter's house in Madison. Uh, very inexpensive. So yeah, Viking Village. Very pleased with uh, everything from the rates to the atmosphere to the quietness, the beauty. It's uh, it's it's got it all. So uh, very lucky to have found this place. And I am like a, a little kid. <laughs> I'm getting so excited. Uh, I'm having trouble sleeping at night even, you know. Uh, but I'm getting uh, all of my stuff put together uh, for a week-long steel surfing expedition. And I don't know, you know, I'm sure that for most people, uh, you know, getting excited over something that's bound to be 40% ordeal and 60% exhilaration <laughs> or some ratio like that <clears throat> doesn't make any sense and I get that uh, but for me this this is just something I've I've been looking forward to almost a year I think <laughs> when, when I couldn't get it out of my system the last time the last time I rode So I make it from Madison to La Crosse on the bus. Pretty decent bus ride, really. Very nice. And the weather sucks. But anyway, I've got some rain gear on. We'll see how well it works. <laughs> it's been my experience that rain gear is kind of hit and miss, but we'll see. The first thing that happens is the trail that I was going to take to my catch-out spot, or the planned catch-out spot, goes uh, along a marsh. The tracks cut right through the marsh and it's closed because of all the rain this year. The Mississippi's flooded and has filled the marshy areas up with more water than normal so the trail's closed. So so much for that plan. So I head to a different spot that I think I can make work or at least a good starting point and find my way to a bridge and wait there. Oh man, I woke up a little nap. I made a mistake, although I don't, just I can't really get my legs in there very well, but I put my coveralls on because it's so dirty under this bridge that uh, I didn't want to get my clothes all dirty. But uh, I made the mistake walking over here in the rain of only wearing my rain jacket and my pants got a lot wetter than I thought they would and now the wind is blowing and even with these coveralls on I can feel the cold from uh, being damp. So uh, if it doesn't quit raining and I have to go back out in it I can guarantee I'm going to put those rain pants on. I'm going to put a long sleeve shirt on here in a minute too because man it, it's a little chilly today. Here I was worried about being overheated in the sun but uh, that isn't going to be a problem today. Maybe tomorrow. Well, I got a train stopping right here in front of me, but it's not something I can ride. So, the trains, a few do stop there, which would be perfect. But, uh, you know, and I'm waiting till it gets dark because in broad daylight, your chances of getting caught are, you know, greatly magnified. So, I'd planned on waiting till night anyway. 
but the trains that that came through or stopped there were not rideable or were going the wrong <laughs> wrong direction so finally uh after dark a perfect double stack z train mixture of double stack containers and piggyback trailers rolls past but it doesn't stop there it goes on into the yard my train pulled in but stopped a half a mile away and I don't think I can get there fast enough it's like 11 o'clock at night the weather sucks and this camera won't focus at night I don't think but I'm going as fast as I can to catch up with it but I'll bet at least before I get there. Two blocks and I'll be there. So I waited, uh, I would say seven, eight, about nine hours. And the train finally came that was perfect, but it went all the way into the yard to change crews, which means where I was sitting was about a half mile away. I walked as fast as I could carrying that pack. I got to the very last car, climbed on to see if it was rideable. It was not. When I stepped off, the train started going. And that was that. It sounds like somebody just jumped in the water by me. <laughs> yeah, turned out to be a beaver swimming around making all kinds of noise slapping the water with his tail. So I thought, well, I can take that and at least get through Minneapolis and at the next crew change after that, I'll get off and wait for a better train or maybe get off in Minneapolis and wait for a better train in uh, you know one that's more suited for for my journey but this will at least get me out of lacrosse so okay i get on this train and it's such a low priority train that we spend about half of our time stopped waiting on other trains and we got about 10 minutes north of lacrosse and we stopped on a siding and a z train blew past us at had to be 70 miles an hour. Had I just waited another 10 or 15 minutes, I would have been on that train. <laughs> but it turns out it might have been lucky anyway, because by now I've started to develop a, a low-grade fever. I'm chilled to the bone. I'm out of the wind on this screener that I'm on, and I'm still freezing. And it was down in the low 40s, and damp, you know, it had been drizzly still even after all the rain. So had I been on that Z train hot shot at 70 miles an hour under a piggyback trailer, I probably would have been, you know, frozen. <laughs> and like I say, I'd started to develop this low-grade fever. I've got just, you know, I think I've got a little diverticulitis flaring up. And uh, that's what it does, you know just a low grade fever for a couple days and then I'm fine so anyway I ride this train and and it's beautiful it's cool going along on the Mississippi but I've got rail car supports are blocking my view and it's just uncomfortable it's not a good it's not a good ride at all
even worse. When we finally get to Minneapolis, instead of going to the North Town Yard where I'm going to catch the, you know, hope to catch the hot shot out, it stops next to the Canadian Pacific's Pig's Eye Yard, which is a hump yard that's crowded with people and rail cars moving on their own everywhere, wide open. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to get arrested for sure. I'm, I'm just convinced that this is what's going to, this is how my day is going to end, you know. So I sit in that train for about an hour and realize that it's been abandoned. And, you know, some of these low priority trains, they may let them sit for a day or two while they wait on crews. So I decided I had to bail. Broad daylight, you know, put my pack all back together and get off of that train and cut across through some brush and whatnot out the side of it and I made it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Nobody saw me. You know, I could see workers all over the place. When I was sitting there, they'd come and go doing brake checks and whatnot. But anyway, I made it out of there. But I was feeling worse and worse as the day went on. And so I decided I would just get a motel room and regroup and decide what I was going to do in the morning. One thing I knew though was I had to abandon that giant pack. That thing was going to get me killed. And so um, I didn't feel any better as the night wore on so I decided to head back to Madison and regroup and I will be doing this again. <laughs> I'm hell-bent on completing this trip this summer and it will be with a lot lighter pack uh, the next time. Anyway, stay tuned and thanks for watching.